Hello and welcome to this tutorial on how to use Adobe Animate. So if you're new to Animate, I think this video will be best for you since I'll be breaking it down as if you are using this software for the first time. This is what appears when you open Animate. Sometimes this doesn't show because it's loading behind in the background. But basically you can just go to File and click New to start a new document. Or you can just go to Create New or you could just choose one of these reset presets and then um, you get to start up. I would advise in this tutorial we use full HD. You can also go straight to this point and then get to bring up this pop-up. Full HD, you can see your dimensions put over here. And these are other presets that you can use to change the aspect ratio according to whatever purpose this animation you're going to do is for. But I'll be using full HD. And as you can see, we have a frame rate here at 24. This is because the standard frame rate for animation is 24 frames per second. But since we are going to use this as a tutorial for beginners, I think I can bring it down to 12, which is the least among the standard for frame rates for animations. So yeah, let's just change this to 12 and then let's get started. So you remember we changed the frame rate to 12 frames per second, which means every 12 images will form one second of the video. Or let me say every 12 frames of drawings for the animation will form one second. So as you can see from zero, from one, from frame one to frame 12, that's when we get one second. I don't know if you guys can see what I'm, what I'm pointing at. All right. So before we start anything, I'd like you guys to understand that there are several ways that Adobe Animate might start up. You might start Adobe Animate and the workspace will be all over the place, It'd be a bit confusing to understand. So I'd like you to change your workspace to look like mine. So what, how we're going to do that is by going to this button over here called Workspaces. In a different version, it might look different, but it's basically the workspace name that might appear there. Sometimes you see essentials over there if you're starting new. <coughs> so let me click this and then my favorite is essentials and classic. Classic is almost the same. As you can see, this is classic. Now let me move back to essentials. This is essentials. And you can see we have developer, which looks different over here. We have designer which looks different and debug which looks different over here classic like we like I showed you at first basic and then animator as you can see the color wheel what is the color palette or something it's all on the left side unlike how it is in Photoshop so I'm actually asking you guys to use essentials or classic because it's more it resembles Photoshop more yeah, because you have your properties and your stuff, other stuff over here, the color is here. You can pick your color from here. All right, so let's just get started with this tutorial. So as you can see, so yeah, this tutorial is going to be, I'm gonna use a bouncing ball reference to animate this. And you can head on to Google and search for bouncing ball animation references. I'm sure you get a lot of pictures similar to mine. So I'm going to import the picture into Animate and then use it as a reference to animate my bouncing ball. So there are two ways you can import a picture into your Animate document. You can send it here into the library so that you use it when you need it. Or you can just drag and drop it in here. So it appears directly on the screen on the canvas but i don't want it that way since i won't be using it right away i have to explain some few stuff to you guys so i'll just drop it into the library yeah so as you can see the bouncing ball images here and don't forget you have to be on library before you import it keep that in mind all right so just like in photoshop we have the tools on this side and then we have the properties over here that will help you change the 
type of brush strokes that you'll be making depend on the tool you're using so the tool you use changes the properties on this side so when I choose a brush you can see the brush size and everything is over here so just think of it like this side helps you to manage how you use your tools over here I think that's basic enough so in this in this tutorial we are going to be using the brush tool or the shape tool so you can change it to um, oval tool since we are going to be drawing this um, a bouncing ball all right so let's import let's drag our bouncing ball picture here nice let me enlarge it a bit so we have to press shift before you enlarge from the corner or else it's going to distort the image so i press and hold shift and then i expand it it maintains its size i mean its shape sorry yeah i think this is cool <coughs> so basically this layer is going to be what i'm going to use for the reference so i'm going to change its name just like in photoshop you double tap on the name you double click on the name of the layer and then you get to type whatever you want over here let me type ref so i don't forget that the that layer doesn't have to be touched but i'm going to have to reduce the opacity a bit so I can see through it and then draw on top of it on a different layer. So let's just right click this, go to properties and then turn opacity on and then reduce it to 25. 25 is quite okay for what we are gonna do here. Let me just type it in, 25. All right, click okay. Now I can see the opacity has reduced. Now let's create a new layer and lock the reference layer so that whatever you see when you don't lock it, you're able to drag it by mistake if you're moving something from your animation. So we can lock it up so that we don't mistakenly move it anymore, as you can see right here. So here's the padlock, you can just tap it and I to lock. Now the new layer that we create, let's change the name to ball because this is the layer on which we are going to draw the bouncing ball all right so before you're able to animate you can see that when you stretch the timeline that way it doesn't work this is because we haven't created exposures we haven't extended the exposure time for the animation so the timeline is this all right but it doesn't know how long the video is going to take and so we have to like tell it how long it's going to take so the shortcut for that will be the F5. Yes, you press and hold F5 for as long as you want the video to be. And yeah, and you can undo that. Just press undo and it and then to reduce it by one by one. So let's just try to imagine how long the browsing ball will take. I'm thinking it's gonna take less than three three seconds, probably like two and a half seconds so i'll just increase it to two and half or well, somewhere close to three let's make it three to make things easier that will be frame 36 all right so before we draw we have to understand that in every frame that you pick you have if you want to draw over there you have to create a keyframe to tell the computer that you are going to make a new drawing i don't know if you get what i mean i think you guys will understand better if i draw demonstrate it so for now let's focus more on the on the whole reference <laughs> all right so our first frame here is empty there's already a keyframe there as you can see you see that circle the black dot means that the frame is filled with something over here on the reference layer it's because of the reference picture that's why it's black it means there's a, something occupying that frame and that frame is extending itself all the way to this point so until we create a new keyframe between the starting point and the end point of that keyframe this one 
it will extend the same picture will extend to the end that's why the bouncing ball reference is still showing even though the timeline is moving forward now back on this layer this one is empty but the moment i draw here it gets filled as you can see so before that you could tell the it was a darker gray but when i drew it became lighter gray because it's showing that that place has a frame that has been exposed within that time frame so yeah but before you draw you always have to remember to create a keyframe but the first keyframe the first frame is always automated once you create a new layer like this as you can see all right so now let's start drawing our bouncing ball if you're using a mouse if you don't have a graphics tablet and you're using a mouse i would advise you to use the overall tool since that will make it easier you can just drag but if you're using a, a, a graphics tablet you could just draw your ball just that you won't get it so accurately but it works since if you're looking for something more detailed you have to take your time but since there's a tutorial for beginners i'm gonna use this because i assume most of you are using a mouse so let's go to the overall tool now with the overall tool you have to go to properties to make some changes because we want the ball to be just a stroke not a full filled circle like this so over here you can see we have a fill and a stroke the stroke is basically the outline so i want us to change the fill to nothing over here as you can see there's this white box with the cancel, red canceling the box you just click that and then we'll have nothing for our fill exactly so i need us to increase the stroke a little bit and see yeah i think something like this will be okay yeah six or seven on the stroke will be okay so we just we're on the first frame right <laughs> so now i'm going to so on the first frame i'm going to focus on only the major keyframes the most important frames over here okay let me create a new layer for demonstrating what i want you guys to do so you don't need to create this layer this is just to make lines to i mean to draw make annotations on the screen so this directs you on what i'm gonna do so this will be for demo demonstration and i'm going to use a brush tool to demonstrate so i'm going to over here i'm going to use the oval tool to create a new change that yes there you are but i'm more interested in these frames this frame this frame this frame this frame this frame this frame this one and that one now the main reason why i'm more interested in these ones is that we are interested in where the animation starts as in the start points and obviously where it ends yes and with this we'll be able to determine how long it will take for the ball to get down and bounce and get down and bounce and get down and bounce so these ones are just to indicate where they are going to you know the limit of the bounce after it's moved from the ground and we are more interested also interested in the time that it touched the ground so as you can see on the reference picture it's like they've squashed the shape of the ball this is because in animation or in real life actually tends actually squash and stretch depending on the force that's being implied on it so for a bouncing ball it means it's a soft ball so like when it comes into contact with the hard surface it actually squashes a bit before it bounces yeah so let me turn this back on all right so we are going to focus on drawing these frames 
and I'm going to let me just turn it off and then go on to go all right so I'm going to draw on the ball layer don't forget make sure you're on the correct layer before you draw and remember there's always supposed to be a keyframe an empty keyframe all right so the shortcut to create a keyframe is by pressing F7 that will create a blank keyframe for you a blank keyframe is very different from a normal keyframe a normal keyframe will be F6 so F6 actually repeats the previous keyframe that you have here let me show you so if I draw this that's a new keyframe if I press F6 it repeats the same picture but on a different keyframe so at first it was just this frame that was repeating itself throughout but now if I press F6 it creates the same keyframe but in a different frame I don't know if you get what I mean but I want us to create focus on using F7 rather that will create a blank keyframe so when I press F7 as you can see it's an empty circle meaning there's nothing in there and so you see the ball vanishes so when I go back to the frame that has the drawing there you see it turns back on and when I bring it here it turns off so it's just a compilation of pictures to form the animation that we want so let me undo quickly and then use the over tool to make the whole animation all right so go to over to first frame let's correct this then real quick all right first frame we draw the ball nice then we move on to the last frame we can even hit play and see how long it's gonna take all right so we go to the last frame and then we draw the last ball which is going to be this one this one all right so on the last frame make sure you're on the correct layer and draw this nicely but you see the mistake i made i didn't create a blank keyframe and so this is appearing and I don't want that so I'm gonna undo that and I'm gonna create a new keyframe which is F7 a blank keyframe and then drag now you can see the balls don't really show on each other yeah so now let's focus on the ones at the top over here so when I press play I can just imagine how the ball is bouncing all right so I'm gonna make it bounce on the 11th frame let me make it a 12th frame meaning one second I guess yeah and that will be the bouncing point of this ball but first like I said we have to create a new keyframe which is F7 and in case you're looking for a button somewhere on the screen that represents blank creating a new keyframe here's the button for keyframes but it's on normal keyframe not just the blank keyframe so if you want a blank keyframe you have to press and hold this it's open this menu and then you choose blank keyframe which means whenever you press whenever you draw in a new layer it's supposed to create a new blank keyframe for you you can also not automate it so that you can't you just you just have to press the button before it creates a new keyframe but the auto keyframe will automatically do it once you start drawing it's you only understand what i'm saying when you try it so yeah, yeah let's just keep it in mind so i'm putting it on blank keyframe so that i'll have to create it so that you guys understand even better so on this new blank keyframe i'm gonna draw the first point of contact which is this one yeah 
so you guys can see it's stretched it's squashed because it's touching the ground because of the force that it came up with and as you can see all the other points of contact kind of seem to be getting less squashed than the first one because the force of gravity that's been that's acting on the ball is lesser as it keeps bouncing and so this one is more has more force that's why it bounces like that it squashes like that so yeah as time goes on the bouncing takes lesser time to get down because there's less distance over here so the next bounce won't really take too long let's say frame 20 yeah but i have to create a blank keyframe like i said so create bank inside blank keyframe or f7 and then i drag it and then i go to the next one which is somewhere supposed to be quite lesser than the previous again so insert blank keyframe and then i draw the next point of contact yeah and then another one which should be a little shorter than the other so insert blank keyframe all right that's the end uh, this one yes so as you can see it's repeating the images one after the other according to the sequence and it's already starting to look like what it wanted so good that's a good news for us all right so we go back to now let's focus on the highest points of contacts as you can see these ones the highest point it reaches after every bounce so let me turn that off and then go back to draw them the nicest thing about this part is that you get to draw in between the frames you've already drawn so you kind of know it's in the middle of every frame that you created so between these two keyframes you're just going to draw this one in between it because it's this one and that one so somewhere in the middle which is like 16 frames inside blank keyframe I draw inside blank keyframe over here too as you can see it's this one and that one so yeah and inside blank keyframe again For this one so now let's press play again see this is more realistic <laughs> all right let's go back and now the easiest part but the most time consuming part is where we have to draw the in-betweens so the in-betweens are basically frames that you um, frames that you draw between keyframes so the keyframes are the most important frames that determine how the action is going to look like the in-betweens are whatever will appear in between the keyframes to make them look smooth so like when i press play this time you'll be seeing the ball moving this way and that way and that yeah instead of just appearing on the bounce and then appearing up there and appearing there yeah you know what i mean Yes, so let's go back and then draw the in-betweens. So I just look for the first and then the second. And then I look for the middle. Somewhere here. And then I create a blank keyframe there. And I draw the frame that appears to be in the middle. That simple. Yep. The same for this one. So it's uh, between this and that so I'm going to look for a frame in between them which is 14 inside blank keyframe now we have more than one in the middle so you can just choose the one that you want to be in the middle depending on how the timing should be yeah 
then I'll do the same for this part too and I'll insert the blank keyframe let me use this as a middle and then move forward a bit Insert blank keyframe and then I insert another one and probably draw it here. So even even though I'm not done, I can just press play and see. Yep, looks more promising. Alright, so it's basically the same process that we use to animate almost anything. So I'm just going to repeat the same process until I've drawn all the frames so that the animation will look smooth enough. So I'll, I'm going to speed this up so I'll show you guys when I'm done. Oh yeah, and one other thing that I have to say is that you can transform the object that you've drawn, but you have to click that keyframe before you can move it. If you don't click it, it's not gonna work. So keep that in mind. And you can only drag it from the stroke itself. If you drag it from the inside, it's not gonna work. All right, let's get back to it. Alright, so you can see here we are done with the animation. I've basically gone through most of the keyframes, most of the frames that are necessary to be gone. So as you can see, when I press play, it kind of seems up a little bit better because I've added the in-between. So here we go. As you can see, it's a little bit breaky here because of the white spaces between each of the drawings, but that actually doesn't really matter. Okay, so we can tweak this. As you can see, our animation is done. It looks quite smooth already. Yeah, so basically that's how you animate in Adobe Animate. This is the basics of Adobe Animate. Um, the hard part comes in later. For that, you don't have to worry yourself. You just have to get used to the software by doing simple animations. Once you're used to it, the rest will follow through. Like I said, this software is just like Photoshop, so most of the things are quite easy to understand once you have used Photoshop. So I'll go ahead and save my document. I'll call it Tutorial 1. Alright. So, thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope this video was quite useful to you. And let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below so that um, if you're facing any issues, I might address that in the next tutorial video that I'll make. Or I can even make a whole video for that specific question or to just, just for the sake of answering the question. So yeah, let me know and kindly like and subscribe to this if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.